Hello everyone, my name is Roman and from this video you will learn how to assemble and set up the ceiling tracking area using the ceiling grid. In short, this process consists of the following steps. First, we mount the ceiling grid. Prepare the ceiling tiles. Then embed the bars in the ceiling. Connect the markers to the power supply and set the ceiling height in anti-latency service. In addition to the anti-latency markers to set up the tracking area, we need a ceiling grid. For example, an Armstrong suspended ceiling system. Armstrong has a wide variety of tiles, so you can choose a design to your liking. Wires, ferrules, A power supply, a power cable, you can use a standard one for a computer. To calculate the output current, use this formula. Also, we need an instrument to cut and crimp the ends of the wires. We recommend using a ceiling grid to embed the markers in the ceiling, for example, an Armstrong system. Such a grid is easy to mount, but keep in mind that the tracking quality depends on the mounting accuracy. The ceiling should be horizontal and the transverse rail should be perpendicular to the longitude. When done with mounting, check if it's done correctly using a laser level. Here we have a standard case where the size of the tiles is 595 mm by 595 mm. The distance between the center of one rail and the center of the parallel one should be 600 mm. If you have other tile sizes or rail width, it will affect the cell size. In this case, you have to edit the parameters of your environment. Before getting to the setup of markers, you need to prepare the tiles. Cut holes in the tiles according to the drawing that is available to download. The link is in the description. To cut holes with maximum accuracy, we recommend contacting a sign company that provides a laser cutting service. Or you can use any other instrument that can provide the same accuracy. Take into account that this drawing presents a top view as if you are looking down at the tile so you see its backside. Remember, the tracking quality depends on the accuracy of the embedded markers. Another way of cutting the holes is to make them using a drill. You need to create a special template with holes with a diameter equal to the diameter of your drill. The center of each hole corresponds to the center point marked on the drawing. Then, you can put this template on the tile and make the tile holes using a 40 mm drill bit for your drill. By the way, don't mind that this template has two holes. It can be used to make tiles with one or two holes as required. When you're finished, you will have some tiles with one hole. and the same number of tiles with two holes. To calculate how many tiles you need, use the environment scheme. It's individually created for each tracking area. Look here, this is a reference bar. Each one has three markers. To embed one bar, we need one tile with one hole and another tile with two holes located close to each other. So we can calculate the number of tiles according to the number of bars used in the scheme. For this one, we need 16 tiles with one hole and 16 tiles with two holes. 
To connect all the markers, we need to prepare the wires. To make one bar, we need one wire 400 mm long and another one 600 mm long. Take your cable reel and cut a wire of the right length. Place a ferrule at the end of the wire and crimp it. Connect the rest of the markers in the same way. Then connect the markers according to this scheme. Take into account the polarity. Connect plus here and minus here. Connect the rest of the markers in the same way. Now we are getting to the point of embedding the markers in the ceiling using the environment scheme. To set it up correctly, we have to remember that the environment scheme displays the position of the markers as if we are looking down at the ceiling from above and not from the bottom up standing under the ceiling. We recommend installing only pre-cut tiles first. In this case, if the assembly is done incorrectly, you don't have to waste a lot of time on reassembling it. Then we set up the bars into the holes. Now we have to make a chain of markers, connecting them in series according to the distance between markers. If done correctly, all the markers will light up green. Note, we highly recommend connecting in no more than 27 markers or 9 bars in a single chain. If you need more, make more chains. You can connect both of them to one power supply if its output current allows it. After connecting the chains of markers to a power supply, measure the voltage at the input of the first marker and the output of the last marker in the chain. The voltage drop should not exceed 2 volts. If the voltage drop is greater than the specified values, check the quality of the connections. There's a small life hack you can use if you can't find a power supply with an output voltage of 18 volts. You can use a power supply with an output voltage of 15 volts with a V plus ADJ resistor. But it needs to be configured. To do this, let's measure the voltage at the V plus contact and at the V minus contact. Then, using a screwdriver, turn the resistor and thus increase the voltage to a value as close to 18 volts as possible. Be careful, not all manufacturers provide such a resistor on their power supply. If you have a lighting or a fire extinguishing system installed under the ceiling, you can skip some tiles without any holes. In this case, make sure that the ceiling doesn't deform due to the lack of tiles. After the ceiling tracking area is set up, you need to measure the distance between the floor and the center of the marker. Then set this parameter in anti latency service. That's all. Now go make your crazy ideas a reality.